Here with FC Edmonton midfielder uh, Tony Chani. Uh, let's talk about uh, your beginnings. Uh, you were you were born in Cameroon, but moved to the States as a teenager. Tell me about that first year in American soil. The first year wasn't even that difficult because knowing that my mom was there already before I came, so it was easier. And also I had like few family members there, so I think just having there was a little bit easier. Like it was like an easy transition from for myself. And I think the most difficult thing was the weather because in Cameroon. We don't have no snow. The wet it's not really that cold. I think like with that cold weather, it was kind of a little bit difficult to adapt. In your first year in the MLS with the New York Red Bulls, you formed a strong duo with uh, Rafa Marquez. What did you learn from uh, a guy like him, considering he was playing in Europe for more than 10 years with clubs like AS Monaco and uh, Barcelona? But I think Rafa was a guy that wasn't talking. He wasn't talking much, you know. So he spoke French and English as well and Spanish. So we had. Like, good group of guys that was speaking French so it was easier to like communicate sometimes but Rafa wasn't really like speaking much he was more like that type of guy we talk with his play you know he never really talk about like okay I'm going to tell you to do this it was rare that he would like tell you what to do but once he tell you to do something you always gotta listen because of where, where he played. Cameron has been home to renowned players like uh, Samuel Eto'o and many others can you tell me a little bit about why it's been maybe so difficult uh, for Cameron to kind of produce some players in, 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 in the moment? You know, I, I don't think it's difficult for Cameron to produce a lot of players, you know. So I feel like with eight or another, we got a lot of players, but the thing that they've been in different country and all that, I think we have like talent is probably like, the issue is probably like maybe like coming together for a little period of time and be on the national team and all that. I feel like we still have to adapt and need to know how to play with each other and also like know our strength and weaknesses. Having played for Toronto FC and Vancouver Whitecaps, you're very familiar with Canada. You faced a very big injury. Last time you played was in August of uh, 2018, and you signed one year later in August of 2019. Uh, can you just tell me about why you decided to come back to Canada when you had maybe could have uh, played in the States? Uh, I think it was more like just looking for the right opportunity for myself you know so I had like a few other places that I could have gone but it was more like I didn't know it was the right fit for myself you know so when I had like my Asian talk to Jeff and all that I felt like oh why not you know like it's a new league and also like I'm familiar with Canada but not Edmonton but it was just like why not you know just go and see how things going over there so. One of the older players on the team uh, would you consider yourself a reference to some of the younger guys? I would think so, you know, because I talk to these guys every time, you know, like on the field and off the field, I would talk to them about like what it takes, you know, because like I was a rookie once and I think it's not that easy, you know, especially like from them playing, for those guys playing for the first time, you know, being a first professional. So I would tell them like, you have to be humble, you know, you have to make sure like you do everything that asks for you to do, you know, and all those little things because like, the little details really matters, especially if you are a beginner or like a rookie. So what would be like one thing that you that you tell them like, because there are so many first year players on this team, so what's one thing that you tell them uh, from the get-go and, and, and always behind the scenes kind of thing, just to, this is what you need to do in order to have a long career like you've had? Well, I think it's more like just, first of all, I think just be humble, you know, don't think that you above anybody else, you know, like you might be playing well, or doing those little things better than somebody else, but don't think that you're above him because, like, at some point, I, and also, like, it depends on the coach. And it's a good decision. Like, if you're not selected, don't take that personally. You know, like, just keep working because like, when the time comes, you can shine. Especially, like, last night, the little kid Prince, that was his first start and his debut. So he did something that maybe some guys didn't do it. You know, he took it with two arms. You know, that's the kind of kid that I talk to me a lot. I would just say, yo, you know what, don't stress out. I feel like he had a good week of training. And I was talking to him every time, just like, I had to make the game simple and easier for yourself, you know, because the first time you might have, like, goosebumps and all that. I feel like once you get all through that, you're going to be fine. Being injured is, is not fun. It's, it's not a situation that any player wants to be in. But when you are injured, uh, just tell me about the work that you have to put in to not only come back, but to come back stronger, to make sure that injury uh, doesn't happen again and to be effective like you were b before. But I think you just have to stay on top of your injury. You have to communicate with the trainers. You have to communicate with the coaches to, s to let them know how you feel. Because at the end of the day, you have to know how your body feels for you to be out, to get back out there and make sure that like, 
the same injury doesn't happen again, you know. So I had been injured in the past, you know, that's the process that you have to take, you know. Sometimes you have to reach out to the trainer. What can I do home, you know? Are you available for me to come up there and see you? You know, just, I feel like communication is key because I feel like if you don't let them know how you feel, they might think, oh, maybe like you're taking things easy or maybe like you're not pushing yourself, maybe you're not, you don't want to come ready and all those things. I feel like communication is key.